Hello, this is Professor Sexton with a short video lecture on William Faulkner's short story, Barn Burning, and Tony K. Bambaro's short story, The Lesson. I'm going to combine my discussion of both of these short stories. I'm going to keep them relatively brief. Uh, the reason why that we're reading both of these short stories are that in many ways, both of these stories are initiation stories. And what I mean by initiation stories, they are ones where the protagonist or the main character in the literary work goes through a period of growth or development and learns something about him or herself and their place in the world. Um, initiation stories can vary depending on the plot, whereas a character might realize that he or she is part of a group or a character might decide that he or she need to leave that group. A character might learn that she or he is treated differently or the world views them views of that person is different. So there's a number of ways that initiation stories can work. So let me begin first with William Faulkner's Burn Burning. And William Faulkner's Burn Burning is a very simple plot in many ways. The story is mainly a story between a father and a son. And the story that we get is told mainly through the perspective of the son. So we see things and experience things mainly through his eyes. When the story opens up, his father is being put on trial by the justice of the peace for setting a person's burn on fire. And so as the opening of the story, what we have is we have the trial and we have the justice of the peace and the person who brought the case against the father uh, claiming that the father burned the burn. And then we see the son who's present there and the son knows that his father did it. And there's a sense that they're going to call the son up to testify against his father. And the main conflict or struggle in the story is does does the son testify against his father? And so it's the sense of family unity, even though the father has done something wrong. So in the beginning of the story, they, they are tempted to call the son up, but they end up not doing it. But the father knows um, afterwards, he's like, you would have told on me, is essentially what he says. And what happens is the family has to relocate to another place. And the story is set like towards the, uh, at the end of the Civil War period, so in the like 1870s, 1880s. And the father and son are sharecroppers. And what the share, where a sharecropper is, a sharecropper is someone who's paid to work someone else's land. Uh, so that person doesn't own the land, but what he does is uh, he farms the land and get a percentage of uh, the crops, but the larger percentage goes to the landowner. And so that's what the father does. And so what the father and the family has to do is they have to relocate to another place. And almost within moments of arriving at the new place, the father gets into a conflict with the new landowner. Uh, he goes to the landowner's house and his boots are dirty. And he's told to remove his boots so that he doesn't stain the carpet, but the father just doesn't care. So he stains the carpet anyway. And uh, the woman of the house, the wife gets very upset. And the landowner comes to the father and says, you have to pay me for the damages that you've done to that carpet. And the father uh, just instinctually decides that, you know, he's gonna get back at this guy and he's gonna do what he's always done he's going to burn this guy's burn down. Um, now the story never goes into much detail why the father behaves this way. We don't get much information about the father's actions and what motivates him to always go this way. But by and large, the story is not about the father, it's about the son. And the son knows that his father is about to do this. And he's trying to do everything in his power to prevent his dad from doing it. And the night before, he sees his father's getting ready to do it again. And the father knows that the son is going to go and tell on him and tell the landowner that, you know, my dad is about to burn your burn. And so what they do is um, his brothers, and even the, his mother, hold him down to prevent him from doing that. But he gets free and he does go and he does go tell. Now, the story ends... Um, 
it's, a, it's an ambivalent ending um, because the landowner learns that this is what the father is about to do. And uh, all we hear are the shots of a gun being fired. And we don't know if the father has been shot. We don't know if the father has died. But from the perspective that we get, because once again, we're seeing everything through that of the son's eyes, there's a sense that the father has been shot and the father has been killed. But what we see in the young boy in this story is an initiation story because he knows that his father has done wrong and yet he did the right thing. And what it does is it calls for him to have him to leave home and set out up on his own. And so in a lot of ways, it's a story that moves him from a, an, an experience of childhood to adulthood where he has to mature. Uh, Tony Cade Van Barra's The Lesson has a similar theme, but it's a very different plot development. So in this story, this story is set in New York City uh, in the 1950s, 1960s. And the story is told through a female protagonist, a young girl, and her name is Sylvia. And in the neighborhood in which they live, there is this woman named Mrs. Moore who likes to take the kids in the neighborhood on these field trips where she's always teaching them a lesson about life and their place, socioeconomic uh, status, class, race, things of that nature. So in this story, what she does is she takes them to FAO Swartz. FAO Swartz used to be a very expensive toy store uh, in uh, Manhattan. Uh, near uh, Central Park, uh, on the lower side of Central Park. Um, the, 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 store, the store closed a number of years ago, so it no longer exists. But it's a very expensive store. And when the children get to the store, before they even go inside the store, they're looking at the shop window. And what they see is how expensive a number of these toys call. I mean, like a sailboat that costs $1,000. And the the students realize, or the, the children realize, because they're not really, Miss, Miss Moore is not really their teacher. Uh, she takes on the role of a teacher. But what they realize is that it's the cost of thing. And what it does is it uh, alerts them to their socioeconomic status and social class. Those who have, those who have not, uh, those who have a lot of money to spend on extravagant things, whereas they have to spend money uh, to maintain rent and to, to for food and things of that nature. And so Sylvia, in a lot of ways, is very reluctant to learn this lesson. Um, she's upset um, that, you know, it's the summertime and Mrs. Moore is taking them on these field trips and continuing their education when they should be having this summer off to, you know, go swim, to play, do things that kids do. And Miss Moore is constantly taking them on these field trips, teaching them things. But what you see in the process of the story is Sylvia knows that something is not right about this situation, that there are people who are able to afford these things that she herself cannot. And you see within her this sense of anger. And the anger in the story is misdirected. Because a lot of times she's directing the anger towards Miss Moore for ruining their summer and bringing them to this. But as the story continues to unfold, what you come to realize that what Sylvia's anger is, is anger really directed at the situation itself. And so this, too, is a somewhat of an initiation story. Because in this story, Sylvia learns something about herself and her socioeconomic class. And just like in um, William Faulkner's Burn Burning, the main character has to make a decision. It has the main character has to make a choice. So both the son and Burn Burning and Sylvia in the lesson, they move from this period of childhood innocence to experience, and then also a period of experience where they have to make a decision about what they're going to do going forward. Um, so that's what both of these stories do. And as I said before, they're both um, initiation stories, uh, that movement from childhood to um, adulthood, uh, that movement from innocence to experience, uh, that movement from being unaware of how the world worked 
to how the world works or that movement of having to make decisions. Um, so you see a lot of those similarities in both of these stories. Uh, this lecture was very short and very brief and did not go into the final details of either story. So what you want to make sure that you do is that you want to read the stories. And as I said before, you can either read the stories first, then uh, watch the video lecture, watch the video lecture first, and then read the stories, whatever way works for you. I uh, hope that you have found this uh, video lecture uh, enjoyable and informative and that you enjoy reading the stories as well. Take care, everyone. Bye.